Obviously, it's very difficult to get uh, uh, concrete details of actually what happened in the Algerian desert. What do we know at this stage? Andrew, exactly right. Even at this late hour, the details are very uh, murky, very cloudy, exactly what happened. Uh, what uh, Algerian state media and the communications uh, director for Algeria has said is that they launched an attack to free the hostages at this gas plant in uh, eastern Algeria. They say that some 600 hostages were free during the attack. They say the reason they decided to press forward with this is because the militants, the uh, jihadists that had taken over the uh, plant and had uh, abducted these hostages, we're planning on taking them out of the country and using them as bargaining chips. Now, uh, there are a lot of unconfirmed uh, r rumors about how many hostages may have been killed or how many uh, militants may have been killed, but what we do know is that there are some that have died in the operation on both sides. Um, speaking a little while ago, uh, Prime Minister David Cameron in the United Kingdom had this to say. There were a number of British citizens taken hostage. We know of one who very sadly died. Um, and we know that this is a very difficult situation as Algerian forces have attacked the compound. Uh, and it is a fluid situation. It is ongoing. It is very uncertain. So I don't want to say any more than that now. But I think we should be prepared for the possibility of further bad news, very difficult news in this extremely difficult situation. So, as you see, Andrew, uh, the Prime Minister of Britain expecting some bad news uh, of, of, of from this situation. Uh, what we do know, this also underscores the danger that uh, these countries in Africa are facing around now. This uh, jihadist, this uh, extremist threat to countries like Mali, to countries like Algeria, uh, countries like Niger. There are hostages still in Niger that have been abducted, French hostages that are still uh, missing in Niger. So, uh, this operation, the Algerians felt they had to take it right away before these hostages were taken out of the country, but uh, although they say that they have been able to successfully free 600 of them, we now know that there are going to be casualties on both sides, Andrew. Do, do we know exactly how many foreign nationals and, and from which countries were being held, Vlad? Well, uh, you know, for for most of the day, uh, most of the countries kept it uh, fairly close to the vest. Uh, we do know that there were Americans. Uh, we've heard reports that there are anywhere from seven to eight Americans that were part of the uh, that were uh, taken hostage. We know there were British citizens. We know there were Japanese citizens, um, and uh, and one Irish uh, citizen, as you uh, played earlier, uh, who was freed. We also know that one Kenyan, uh, two Britons, uh, were also freed earlier today. Um, but you know, as far as exact numbers. Even the French were really sort of holding it close to the vest, uh, although there was also one French uh, citizen that was released uh, earlier today, Andrew. But still very, very and unclear what do we... as to, you know, even the number of hostages taken. We, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I, you're right. It's still very, very unclear. What, what do we know about the actual hostage takers themselves, about how well organized they were, who they're affiliated with? Right. So the rationale that the militants say that the reason why they took these hostages was because Algeria had opened up their airspace to allow French uh, air, uh, warplanes to attack uh, insurgent uh, rebel bases in Mali. Uh, they say that they were going to strike back at the heart of France. Uh, they are also angry at France for undertaking military intervention. Now, the man who's rumored to be behind this uh, Mokhtar Bel Mokhtar is a man who has a long history of terrorist activity. This is a man who started uh, fighting uh, with the Mujahideen uh, back in Afghanistan in the 80s against the Soviets. Uh, he then took part in the Algerian Civil War. A uh, very shady figure. They call him the Marlboro Man, Mr. Marlboro, because he's a known smuggler. Uh, he is known to engage in all sorts of dirty tactics. But there is, uh, there are some analysts that are saying that this particular operation was very well planned. It was not spontaneous. In other words, even if they are saying that the reason for this was because the Algerians uh, allowed French warplanes to fly through the Algerian airspace, that it could not have been planned so quickly. And so they're saying that it probably took a lot of time to plan an operation like this. They knew exactly where to go. They knew exactly how to hit them. They came prepared, Andrew.